US Physics Olympiad year 2012 F equal MA First round Solutions for all problems you can find uh, below this video in the reference of the description Problem 1 Consider a dripping faucet where the faucet is uh, 10 cm above the sink the time between drops is such that uh, when one drop hits the sink, one is in the air and uh, another is about to drop. At what uh, height above the sink will the drop in the air be right as a drop hits the sink? Solution. Here uh, we can use a formula a height uh, versus time. So this uh, formula looks like this h equal a one half g t square. Let's analyze this. Let's uh, take a uh, first drop. First drop uh, take time t to uh, cover ten centimeters, and uh, second drop take uh, time uh, t over two. So it means that the uh, height must be quadratic to time. It means that the uh, second uh, drop uh, cover height equal this one, which is uh, h over 4. That will be 2.5 centimeters uh, from top. It means that it was on the 7.5 centimeters above the sink, which is uh, answer D. Problem number 2. A cannibal is uh, launched uh, with the initial velocity of magnitude V0 over a horizontal surface. At what uh, minimum angle theta minimum above the horizontal should the cannibal be launched so that it rises to a height h which is uh, larger than the horizontal distance r that uh, it will travel when it returns to the ground. Solution. Here we can use a well-known formula connecting uh, height and range. Height equal uh, one quarter of uh, tangent theta multiplied by range. And uh, because uh, h over r equal one quarter tangent theta, it means that h over r must be greater than one. It means that uh, tangent theta must be greater than four which is for theta equal 76 degrees, which is uh, answer A. Problem number 3. An equilateral triangle is uh, sitting on an inclined plane. Friction is uh, too high for it to slide under any circumstances. But if the plane is uh, sloped enough, it can topple down the hill. What angle incline is uh, necessary for it to start toppling? Solution Let's uh, check this picture. Here we have inclined plane and uh, we have a equilateral triangle sitting on this plane. Equilateral, it means that uh, all corners are 60 degrees and then uh, the center of this uh, triangle is the uh, center of uh, gravity for this uh, triangle and uh, to be this uh, triangle in uh, equilibrium vertical line from this uh, center of gravity must go uh, to the left from this uh, corner if it's going uh, to the right from this corner it will topple down so it means that uh, critical position is when uh, this uh, line going exactly through this corner but this angle equal uh, 30 degrees due to symmetry and uh, from this geometry it means that uh, this uh, angle must be equal 60 degrees for incline so that's critical angle and the uh, answer is uh, 60 degrees u.s physics olympiad year 2012 f equal m a first round Problem 4. The particle at the rest explodes into three particles of equal mass in the absence of uh, external forces. 
two particles and merge at a right angle to each other with a equal speed v. What is the speed of the third particle? Solution. Here we can use a momentum conservation, which is uh, initially equal zero and finally must be equal zero. So it means that uh, momentum for two first particles is uh, m multiplied by uh, square root 2v and it must be equal to momentum of a third particle in opposite direction which is uh, mv prime so from here we can find that uh, v prime equal square root 2v which is answer b problem number five a 12 kilogram block moving east at uh, 4 meters per second collides uh, head on with a 6 kilogram block that is uh, moving west at uh, 2 meters per second. The two blocks uh, move together after the collision. What is the loss in kinetic energy in this collision? So here we can use uh, energy expression and uh, momentum conservation. Let's uh, count uh, initial energy. Initial energy equal this expression. Now let's count what is uh, total momentum, which is uh, conserved. Initial momentum equal m1 v1 plus m2 v2, which is equal final momentum m1 plus m2 multiplied by common speed v. From here we can find uh, what is this uh, final speed v. Final speed equal this expression. And now we can find uh, what is uh, final energy. Final energy E2 will be this one. Now uh, we can count what is uh, energy loss. This is the expression for energy change. Uh, let's count it. Energy lost will be this expression. And now let's uh, put the numbers. Here uh, we need to emphasize that uh, V2 is negative. This is uh, why we put here a plus. And the answer is uh, 72 joules, which is uh, answer D. Problems number 6 and 7. The following information applies to questions 6 and 7. Two cannons are arranged uh, vertically with the lower cannon pointing upward towards uh, the upper cannon and the upper cannon pointing downward towards the lower cannon 200 meters above the lower cannon. Simultaneously they both fire. The muzzle velocity of the lower cannon is uh, 25 meters per second and the muzzle velocity of the upper cannon is uh, 55 meters per second. Question number 6. How long after the cannon's uh, fire do the projectiles collide? And uh, question 7. How far beneath the top cannon do the projectiles collide? Solution. Now, first of all, uh, we can use uh, here a proper frame of reference. You could take a frame of reference uh, which is uh, moving with acceleration g downward. In this uh, frame, the velocities of uh, this uh, both cannon course are constant, and uh, we can find uh, what is a relative velocity. That will be 25 plus uh, 55 uh, meters per second, which is uh, 80 meters per second. And uh, to find uh, what is uh, total time, we need to divide full distance by this uh, relative velocity. That will be uh, 200 over 80, which is uh, 2.5 seconds. That's uh, answer B, correct one. Next uh, question is uh, number 7. 
how far beneath the top cannon do the projectiles collide. Solution. So uh, using this equation for total height, we can uh, count it after putting numbers. That will be around uh, 170 meters, which is answer E. Problem number 8. A block of mass M equal 3 kilogram is moving on a horizontal surface towards a massless spring with the spring constant K equal 80 newton per meter. The coefficient of uh, kinetic friction between the block and the surface is a new K equal 0.5. The block has a speed of uh, V equal to 2 meters per second when it first comes in contact with the spring. How far will the spring be compressed? Solution. Here we can use a work energy theorem. It means that uh, initial energy, which is uh, completely kinetic energy for this mass, uh, turning to potential energy of the spring, uh, plus uh, work done by force of friction. Let's write this uh, expression. This is the formula. One half mv square, that's uh, kinetic energy for mass. Uh, mu k mg x, that's uh, work done by force of friction. And uh, one half k x square, that's uh, final potential energy for compressed spring. As we can see, this is a quadratic equation to x. Let's put the numbers and uh, count the result. This is uh, our equation in numbers. And uh, after simplification, we have this equation. Let's try the solution. This is the solution for two roots. But uh, we have to take a positive root, not negative. And uh, for positive, we have uh, 0 0.24 meters which is uh, answer B. Problem number 9. A uniform spherical planet has a radius R and the acceleration due to gravity at its uh, surface is uh, G. What is the escape velocity of a particle from the planet's surface? Solution. Escape velocity in some particular point means that uh, total energy of uh, this uh, satellite is uh, zero. Let's write this uh, expression for total energy. Right on the surface of this planet, uh, we have uh, total energy equal kinetic energy plus uh, potential energy, which is uh, negative g m m over r, where r is the radius of this planet. Let's uh, express this uh, through G. Uh, we can replace uh, this expression for potential energy by this formula. And here uh, G multiplied by mass of planet and uh, divided by R square. That will be acceleration due to gravity on the surface of this planet. So that's uh, equal mgr. And when we put this uh, to this uh, equation, we can find uh, what is the uh, escape velocity. Escape velocity equal square root from 2gr. That's the uh, answer C, correct one. Mm -hmm. Problem number 10. Four objects are placed at rest at the top of an inclined plane and allow it to roll without slipping to the bottom in the absence of rolling resistance and air resistance. Object A is a solid brass ball of diameter D. Object B is a solid brass ball of diameter 2D. Object C is a hollow brass sphere of diameter D. Object D is a solid aluminium ball of diameter D. Aluminium is less dense than brass. 
the balls are placed so that their centers of mass all travel the same distance. In each case the time of uh, motion t is measured. Which of the following statements is uh, correct? Solution. Here we need to take into account what is the expression for moment of inertia for each object. Moment of inertia for any uh, round uh, object we can express in form of I equal beta m r square, where beta could be some kind of coefficient for a holosphere. Uh, beta equal 2 over 3. For solid sphere, that's equal to 2 over 5. And the uh, result depends only on this uh, beta. If we have beta greater, we have a uh, greater time. Because uh, for more beta, we have more energy going to rotation of motion and less energy going to translational motion. It means that uh, linear acceleration for such objects uh, will be less. It means that the uh, result is the same for objects A, B and D, and uh, for object C time will be greater. So that's the answer. US Physics Olympiad Year 2012, F equal MA. First round. Problem 11. Solution for this problem you can find below this video in the reference of the description. As shown below, Lily is using the rope through a fixed pulley to move a box with a constant speed V. The kinetic friction coefficient between the box and the ground is mu less than 1. Assume that the fixed pulley is uh, massless and there is uh, no friction between the rope and the fixed pulley. Then, while the box is moving, which of the following statements is uh, correct? Solution. Let's uh, do a first uh, quality analysis. Suppose that Initially, angle between rope and the horizontal is very small. Uh, in that case, force of tension approximately equal to mu mg. And the uh, mu is uh, less than 1, it means that it's mostly like less than mg. And now, suppose that angle is almost uh, 90 degrees. In that case, magnitude on the rope almost mg. So it means that it's greater than mu mg. And the statement A is uh, not correct. Let's check statement B. The magnitude of the friction between the ground and the box is uh, decreasing. This could be true because during the motion uh, angle is increasing and tension help to reduce normal force and this will reduce force of friction. So that very close to a uh, right answer. Answer C. The magnitude of the normal force on the ground on the box is increasing. It's obviously not true. Because uh, initially this magnitude equal almost mg. And finally it's almost zero. D. The pressure of the box on the ground is increasing. That's the same as uh, statement C, so that's not true. Statement E. The pressure of the box on the ground is constant. That's uh, again not true, because we just proved that uh, initially it was mg and finally it was almost zero. Now uh, let's prove uh, our answer B by formulas. Suppose that the uh, angle between a rope and the uh, horizontal is theta, a uh, force of tension is T, force of friction is F, and normal force is N. Now uh, let's write equations. So first uh, we have uh, 
tension multiplied by cosine theta equal force of friction, horizontal part. So for vertical part we have a tension multiplied by sine theta plus normal force equal mg. And also we have a relation between force of friction and normal force. Force of friction equal uh, mu multiplied by normal force. Now let's uh, solve this uh, system. First we can express normal force from second equation. We have this expression. Now uh, we put this uh, normal force in uh, this uh, expression for force of friction. And uh, we can put this uh, force of friction in the first equation. So this is the equation for tension. So we found that the tension equal this expression. Now let's count what is uh, normal force. Normal force is uh, this one. And uh, finally we can count what is uh, force of friction. Force of friction, this one. Uh, let's investigate behavior for all uh, three forces. Uh, tension, normal force and uh, force of friction. If we look at this formula, we can say that when the uh, angle is close to zero and uh, increasing, tangent increasing, it means that force of friction always decreasing. For the same reason, normal force always decreasing. And the tension, tension, uh, if we investigate this uh, function, this function has a maximum between zero and uh, 90 degrees. So, initially it's uh, increasing and uh, after that it's decreasing. So, it means that tension initially decreasing and after increasing. So, that's the behavior for tension. And uh, now let's uh, see what happened here. A. The magnitude of the force on the rope is constant. Which is not true. It's not constant. B. The magnitude of the friction between ground and the box is decreasing. Yes, that's true. We just uh, investigated. And uh, C, D and E, they are not correct because of this formula. Normal force is always uh, decreasing, which is not uh, clear for C, D and E. So, correct answer is B. U.S. Physics Olympiad, year 2012, F equal MA, first round. Problem number 12. Solution for this problem you can find below this video in the uh, reference of the description. A rigid hoop can rotate about the center. Two massless strings are attached to the hoop, one at A, the other at B. These uh, strings are tied uh, together at the center on the hoop of at O and the weight G is uh, suspended from that point. The strings uh, have a fixed length regardless of the tension and the weight G is only supported by the strings. Originally OA is uh, horizontal. Now, the outer hoop will start to slowly rotate uh, 90 degrees clockwise until OA will become vertical, while keeping the angle between the strings constant and uh, keeping the object static. Which of the following statements about the uh, tensions T1 and T2 in the two strings is uh, correct? Solution. Uh, let's uh, redraw this uh, picture with a uh, mention of uh, angles. Let's say uh, theta 1 will be angle between the uh, first string and the vertical and uh, theta 2 is the uh, angle between the uh, second string and the vertical. Both are positive. And uh, let's uh, write the equations for static equilibrium in any position for these uh, angles. 
in horizontal direction we have this equation t1 sine theta 1 equal t2 sine theta 2 and in uh, vertical direction we have uh, this equation t1 cosine theta 1 plus uh, t2 cosine theta 2 equal g solution for these uh, two equations are uh, this one for t1 and this one for t2 let's investigate them we have uh, in the denominator sine theta 1 plus theta 2 and this uh, is a uh, constant and uh, this sign is uh, also positive because it's a uh, lie between uh, pi over 2 and uh, pi and uh, let's check what happens if uh, the uh, angles are changing at t1 start uh, from sine theta 2 initially it's uh, increasing and after reaching theta 2 pi over 2 it start to decrease and uh, for t2 we have initially sine theta 1 is 1 so it means that uh, t2 has a maximum and uh, finally it's uh, reducing to 0 in position when uh, theta 1 is 0 so that's the behavior for t1 and t2 and let's check what happened to these answers answer a t1 always uh, decreasing which is not correct we investigated because initially it's uh, increasing and uh, after that it's decreasing t1 always increasing that's not correct too t2 always increasing uh, which is not correct it's always decreasing and t2 will become zero at the end of the rotation that's true in the end of rotation sine theta 1 equals 0 and uh, t2 equals 0 and the uh, answer e t2 first increase then decrease which is not true it's always decreasing so correct answer is d also i can mention that uh, this uh, answer we could uh, guess because in the uh, position when theta 1 is uh, 0 the equilibrium will be when uh, tension t1 is uh, g and uh, tension for t2 is 0 it's uh, just a uh, loose position so this is why we can guess this uh, answer problem number 13 shown below is a graph of the x component of uh, force versus position for a mass equal 4 kilogram cart constrained uh, to move in one dimension on the x axis at x equals 0 the cart has a velocity of uh, negative 3 meters per second in the negative direction which of the following is uh, closest to the maximum speed of the cart solution because uh, on this graph we have uh, force uh, depending on the uh, displacement we can use energy approach here because uh, cart uh, getting energy which is equal to area under the curve and uh, we see that the uh, positive area is uh, till uh, point 0.6 meters and after it's negative it means that the uh, cart will get maximum velocity in point c and uh, we just need to count what is the area of this figure this uh, rectangle and uh, this uh, triangle let's count it for rectangle we have uh, 5 newtons multiplied by 1 meter which is uh, 5 joules and uh, for triangle we have 5 multiplied by 5 and divided by 2 which is a uh, 12.5 so total area will be 17.5 joules 
and uh, we need to count the uh, initial energy which uh, corresponding to speed uh, 3 meters per second so total kinetic energy equal initial kinetic energy plus uh, work done by uh, this uh, force uh, we can mention that uh, it doesn't matter that our body move in opposite direction initially because uh, it will return with the same speed in a positive direction in the same point so and total answer will be 35.5 joules total kinetic energy and now we can find the what is the speed in point six meters so total kinetic energy equal uh, 35.5 joules uh, from here we can find what is a v square that will be 17.75 and uh, finally speed will be 4.2 meters per second which is the uh, answer e u.s physics olympiad year 2012 F equal MA. First round. Problem 14. Solution for this problem you can find below this video on the reference of the description. A uniform cylinder of radius A originally has a weight of 18 newtons. Half 10 of FX cylinder hole at 2 over 5A was drilled through it, it weighs uh, 65 newtons. The axes of the two cylinders are parallel and uh, their centers are at the same height. A force T is uh, applied to the top of the cylinder horizontally. In order to keep the cylinder at rest, the magnitude of the force is closest to solution. In this uh, problem, uh, we assume that the center of cylinder is uh, fixed. In other cases, uh, if it's not fixed, uh, it will roll to the right. And uh, suppose that uh, this uh, center is fixed. Now we can uh, drill the hole uh, symmetrical to the original one to the left, same distance. 2 over 5a and uh, take it off. In that case, uh, the left part, left part will be in equilibrium, but uh, drill the one uh, create a torque around the center of uh, gravity, uh, which is equal uh, 15 newtons multiplied by distance uh, 2 over 5a and it must be equalized by torque uh, created by uh, force F which is F multiplied by A so here we have equation torque F multiplied by A must be equalized by uh, force of gravity 15 newtons multiplied by 2 over 5 A so from here we can find that force F equal 6 newtons. Problem number 15. A car of mass M has an engine that provides a constant power output P. Assuming no friction, what is the maximum constant speed V maximum that this car can drive up a long incline that makes an angle theta with a horizontal solution? In this uh, problem, we assume that there are no uh, kinetic friction because uh, without friction car cannot just drive up the hill so here we have uh, static friction and uh, let's uh, write equation for power solution uh, we know that the power equal uh, force created by engine multiplied by speed in our case, uh, because uh, the car is uh, going with a constant velocity, it means that uh, 
the force uh, created by engine must be equalized by a uh, part of uh, force of gravity in the opposite direction. So, it means that we have equation uh, power equal mg multiplied by sine theta multiplied by speed v. So, from here we can find what is speed v. That will be p over mg sine theta, which is answer A. Problem number 16. Inside a cart that is accelerating horizontally at the acceleration A, there is a block of mass M connected to two light springs of a force constants K1 and K2. The block can move without friction horizontally. Find the vibrational frequency of the block. Solution. Here the acceleration has no influence on friction. It has only influence on the point of equilibrium for compressed or stretched springs. And after that it will vibrate as uh, without acceleration. And now uh, if we compress one spring and uh, stretch other spring with the same distance x, there will be force acting in opposite direction, which is uh, proportional to k1 plus k2. This uh, frame of reference, uh, which is moving with acceleration a, the uh, equation for motion of this block will look like this. Mass multiplied by acceleration in the direction x is equal negative k1 plus uh, k2 multiplied by displacement x. So we can rewrite this equation in form of this one. And this form uh, corresponds exactly to the form of uh, harmonic oscillation. We know that the angular frequency for this motion we can get from this uh, coefficient that will be omega square. It means that the frequency equal this one which is answer E. U.S. Physics Olympiad, year 2012. F equal MA, first round. Problem number 17. Shown below is a log by log plot for the data collected of amplitude and the period of oscillation for certain nonlinear oscillator. According to the data, the relationship between period T and amplitude A is uh, best given by such uh, equations. Solution. If we look at this uh, graph log by log, we can write a question which is uh, corresponding to this graph. Slope for this graph is 2 and uh, for log A equal 0, log t equal 3. So it means that uh, this uh, equation must look like this. Log t equal 3 plus 2 times log a. Now let's put 10 in the power of both of these uh, expressions. So we have t equal uh, 1000 a square, which is answer a. Problem number 18. A mass hangs uh, from the ceiling of a box by an idle spring. With the box uh, held fixed, the mass is uh, given an initial velocity and uh, oscillates uh, with a purely vertical motion. When the mass uh, reaches the lowest point of its motion, the box is uh, released and uh, allowed it to fall. To an observer inside the box, which of the following quantities does not change when the box is released? Ignore higher resistance. Solution. The only difference uh, between box in uh, first uh, case and uh, box in uh, second case when it uh, fallen, when it has a free fall, that point of equilibrium has a different position. 
in the second case uh, when the box is uh, released uh, when the mass in the lowest point the point of equilibrium moves up it means that uh, amplitude is uh, increasing and because we have ideal spring uh, the period must be the same let's uh, check uh, the answers the amplitude of the oscillation that's not true amplitude will increase the period of the oscillation that's true period will be the same see the maximum speed reached uh, by the mass uh, maximum speed will increase because uh, amplitude will increase d the height of at which the mass reached its maximum speed yes uh, that's uh, true because uh, maximum speed will be in the uh, position of equilibrium and the position of equilibrium will uh, change the maximum uh, height reached by the mass this uh, position will change because uh, amplitude will change so correct answer is b problem number 19 a 1500 watt motor is uh, used to pump water a vertical height of uh, 2 meters out of a flooded basement through a cylindrical pipe the water is uh, ejected uh, through the end of the pipe at the speed of uh, 2.5 meters per second ignore friction and assuming that all of the energy of the motor goes to the water which of the following is uh, closest to the radius of the pipe the density of water is uh, rho equal 1000 kilograms per cubic meter solution we can count uh, power by regular formula power equal force multiplied by speed in our case uh, force equal force of gravity and uh, this is how a column of uh, two meters high move up with the speed v equal 2.5 meters per second so we need to uh, multiply weight of this uh, column by speed that will be power pi r square h that's a total volume of this uh, column of water multiplied by rho that's a total mass of this column multiplied by g that's a weight or that's a force which uh, produce uh, this motor and the uh, force multiplied by speed that's a power and, uh, from here we can find what is r square r square equal power over v pi rho g h when we put numbers we have this expression which is equal approximately 0 0.01 so to find what is r we need to get the square root from this and that will be r equal 0 0.1 meters or 10 centimeters which is answer d u.s physics olympiad year 2012 f equal m a first round problem 20 solution for this problem you can find below this video on the description reference a container of water is uh, sitting on a scale originally the scale reads m1 equal 45 kilogram a block of uh, wood is uh, suspended from a second scale originally the scale reads uh, m2 equal 12 kilogram the density of wood is uh, 0 0.6 gram per square centimeter. The density of the water is uh, 1 gram per square centimeter. The block of wood is uh, lowered into the water until half of the block is beneath the scale. 
what is the resulting reading of the scales solution in this problem we just need to account what is the buoyancy force acting on this uh, block from water first because we know what is the mass of uh, this uh, wooden block and uh, we know what is the density of this wood we can count what is the total volume of this block after that uh, we can count what is the half of this volume and after that we can count what is the buoyancy force from water exerted in the second case because we know what is the density of water let's do this volume of this uh, wooden block equal the mass of this block divided by the density of wood next uh, half of uh, this volume equal this expression and uh, next buoyancy force or buoyancy mass equal this expression after putting numbers we will get uh, 10 kilograms that's a buoyancy force which is acting on the wooden block from one side and acting on the lower scale uh, on the uh, second case so it means that uh, we have to subtract 10 kilogram from the second reading and uh, add 10 kilogram to the first reading that will be 55 kilogram for m1 and uh, 2 kilogram for m2 problem number 21 a spring system is set up as a follows. A platform with a weight of 10 newtons is on the top of two strings, each with a spring constant 75 newton per meter. On top of the platform is a third spring with a spring constant 75 newtons per meter. If a ball with a weight of 5 newtons is then fastened uh, to the top of the third spring and then slowly lower it by how much does the height of the spring system change in this problem we just need to count uh, what is the uh, spring constants for uh, parallel connected uh, springs and uh, series connected springs two lower uh, springs are connected in parallel it means that uh, equivalent k1 equal 2k also uh, next uh, we have uh, upper springs uh, connected to these lower springs so and they are connected in uh, series it means that uh, total k could be counted like this and uh, k2 equal to third uh, k and the uh, last step is to find uh, what is the uh, displacement that will be force uh, 5 newtons uh, divided by equivalent uh, k for whole system and uh, the answer is uh, 0 0.1 meters or 10 centimeters and an answer is uh, 0 0.1 meter which is uh, c correct answer Problem number 22. The softest uh, audible sound has an intensity of I0 equal 10 power negative 12 watt per meter square. In terms of the fundamental units of uh, kilograms, meters and the seconds, this is equivalent to which one? We have uh, five choices. Solution to find the, the units in SI system for this intensity we need to convert watts to this uh, fundamental units let's count uh, power power equal joule per second joule equal newton by meter and newton equal kilogram by meter per second square Finally, that's uh, equal kilogram by meter square over second power 3. And uh, finally, I0 equal 
10 power negative 12 kilogram per second cube. That's the answer A. American Physics Olympiad year 2012 F equal MA. First round. Problem 23. Which of the following sets of equipment cannot be used to measure the local value of the acceleration due to gravity G? There are five different sets. Solution. Let's examine all these uh, sets. A. A spring uh, scale which uh, reads in uh, force units and uh, known mass. This uh, set could be definitely used because uh, if we divide uh, weight by mass, we will get G. So it means that this is not correct answer. B. A rod of uh, known length and unknown mass and the stopwatch. This equipment uh, could be used if we take this uh, mass and use it as a pendulum with a known length. Uh, we can count uh, what is uh, G using period and the using length formula. So this is not correct answer. C. An inclined plane of uh, known inclination, several cards of different known masses and the uh, stopwatch. Here we definitely need to know what is the height from the, where these uh, cards can be pushed or uh, the distance they travel. But uh, we don't have measure for that. So this is definitely cannot be used to, to measure what is G. So it means that this is correct answer. D. A launcher uh, which uh, launches uh, projectiles at uh, known speed, a projectile of known mass and a meter stick. This could be used for G because uh, we have formula to find uh, what is uh, maximum range if we know what is uh, initial speed. So for uh, angle 45 degrees we can get the maximum range. But here we can repeat our measurements for different uh, angles and uh, find what is the maximum range and uh, find what is the G using this uh, known formula. So it means that this is not correct answer. And last one E, a motor with a known output power and known mass, a piece of string of unknown length and the stopwatch. This one is tricky uh, because uh, we have a motor with a known output power and uh, we can uh, hang this uh, motor using string and uh, turn it on and count what is the total time for this uh, motor to pull this uh, up the string. It means that uh, we know what is power, we know what is uh, total time, so we, we can get uh, total energy multiplying power by time. And this energy equals mgh. So mass is known, it means that we can find what is uh, gh. And the uh, second thing we can use, we can use this motor as a pendulum. And uh, we can uh, measure what is the uh, period of oscillation for this pendulum. And uh, from this uh, period we can find what is uh, G over L. So it means that uh, from uh, first experiment we can find what is G multiplied by L. And uh, from the second experiment what is G divided by L. From here we can find what is G and also what is L. So it means that E is not correct answer. And we have only one correct answer is C. Problem 24. Three point masses M are attached together by identical springs. 
When placed at rest on a horizontal surface, the masses uh, form a triangle with the side length L. When the assembly is uh, rotated about its uh, center at the uh, angular velocity omega, the masses uh, form a triangle with the side length 2L. What is the spring constant K of the springs? Solution First, uh, let's uh, draw the picture of this triangle. When uh, this uh, construction rotates with the angular speed omega, the length of this uh, side B equal 2L. Also, uh, we need to count uh, what is the uh, length of this uh, side A connecting uh, any mass with the center of triangle. This A from uh, the geometry equal L over cosine pi over 6 or 30 degrees. And now let's uh, write the equation for centripetal force which acting on each uh, rotating mass. Because uh, all springs uh, enlarged by uh, distance L, the force of tension in each uh, spring equal KL. And this force uh, directing in uh, this direction, and uh, for each mass we have total force uh, composed from uh, two forces. And we need to count what is the projection of these uh, two forces on the uh, uh, direction of this uh, A part, which is 2KL multiplied by cosine uh, 30 degrees or pi over 6. And uh, from the other hand, uh, this uh, force must be equal to centripetal force, which is MA omega square. And uh, A we already counted. So when we put this uh, in this uh, expression, we can uh, cancel L, and finally we can count what is uh, K. K equal m omega square over 2 uh, cosine pi over 6 square, which is uh, 2 over 3 m omega square. That's answer C, correct one. Problem number 25. Consider the two orbits around the Sun shown below. Orbit P is a circular with radius R. Orbit Q is a elliptical such that the furthest point P is between 2R and 3R. And the nearest point A is uh, between R over 3 and uh, R over 2. Consider the magnitudes of the velocities of the circular orbit VC, the velocity of the comet in the elliptical orbit at the furthest uh, point VB, and the velocity of the comet in the elliptical orbit at the nearest point VA. Which of the following rankings is correct? Solution. From these uh, five in equations, uh, we can guess uh, the result and the check uh, result C. If we compare 10 VB with uh, VA, we can say that uh, the, the furthest uh, difference could be when uh, distance uh, from A to Sun is uh, R over 3 and uh, furthest is uh, 3R, means that uh, the biggest difference between these uh, two distances is uh, 9 times. It means that uh, due to angular momentum conservation, VA multiplied by 9 must be greater than B, and we have uh, 10 VB greater than VA. So this is a correct one. And now let's check VA greater than VC. If uh, in this point uh, we have a circular orbit on a small distance, we have uh, this uh, speed VA must be greater than VC. But uh, 
this uh, orbit is not circular, it's elliptical. It means that uh, this speed must be greater than for circular orbit. It means that uh, in any case, V A must be greater than V C. So C is the uh, correct answer. It means that uh, we even don't need to uh, check answer A, B, D, and E.